Hello guys, welcome to second part of our ADF interview question and answer. We will continue where we had left. So briefly we have already covered this section in our previous section when we saw different kinds of link services and the data set which are supported. So all this type of question which is revolving around can we load from SAP to Azure, can we load from Oracle, can we do um, transformation of XML, JSON, everything which is revolving around all these things you have to say yes because your link service if it is supporting that source and destination if that shows that this is a data type or this is a file type which is supported like XML, JSON, uh, your uh, TXT file, your XLS sheet. Yes, those are all supported that can be worked on. The answer should be yes. So interviewer is just trying to understand your your knowledge on all this thing whether you understand or not even if you have worked only on one source or one file type do you actually know that all all the different file types and source which are supported or not do you know or not that is what he'll try to gauge now we'll come to more specific questions which may come up if you have already crossed that level 1, level 2, level 3 what we have talked about till now then you will reach here. Here he may, he may try to ask you very very specific question which he might have come across in his project or he is aware of. So let's take one example, a few example. I have 50 file sizes are different like different file size. One requirement is to have big pick up only those files which are greater than 10 GB how do you how do you factor in this so there is answer, answer to this is that you have a get metadata activity which actually provides you this kind of details about your file it gives you the file names how many files you have what are the uh, what are the size of that so based on that you can filter and you can choose which file you want to copy and which file you don't want to copy so that is the answer for this how to load data from 100 tables residing on one server using single pipeline this is where your parameterization will come into the picture he if you say that you are going to create 100 pipeline or 100 data factory you are gone he, what he expects is that you are going to create a single pipeline where you are going to parameterize your link service you are going to parameterize your data set and you are going to dynamically send your table name you may keep your table name somewhere else in your control table config table that you can build your story around but that is what he is expecting in this now I have a JSON file, it is a multi-line unstructured data, I want to convert to this into a tabular format. So there are a lot of cases where your source is either in a JSON format or in XML format or it's Excel sheet. So all these uh, features are available in data factory, you can flatten your JSON file, you can flatten your XML. You have to create your data set in such a way and there is a way to do that. There is a specific uh, video around this, how you can uh, uh, flatten your JSON file. I will give that link also in the description, please go and watch that. This is very important, the JSON part. I'm copying files based on last modified date with some reason I could not able to process last three days file. How would you handle this situation? Now these are the uh, specific question where he has built his design in a way that he picks only the incremental file on a daily basis probably with based on the days. Okay, So this depends on how you have designed it but the way you have to answer is that yes. There are ways that you can pick, you can filter your file names and you can find out which file is for which day and I would suggest that anytime you build or you, you design your pipeline always have a control or logging system where you know that when was your uh, job ran successfully so that you know that how many days of file which you have not processed and where to start so you can uh, build your answer around that you will say that okay this is how I have designed my pipeline or I will design my pipeline and this is how I will handle it Okay, continuation to that, there are 100 files in my ADLS, how will you load these all files into different tables? Again, this is question of parameterization, do not try to create 100 pipeline, you say one pipeline will be parameterized and I am going to dump it. Here one, may, one variation may come is that he will say that okay, I, all my 100 files should go into single table instead of different table he may say it has to go to single table you have to merge it so there are ways that we can merge it we can copy all the file if it is in the same same folder you don't have to do anything you just have to pick all the file at one shot and it will dump everything to your destination 
I have CSV file which contains date in end of file name how do you process files which contain yesterday's date again I think we talked about this uh, if your file name has certain uh, um, uh, if your file has certain pattern we can utilize that most of the time your files uh, if they have designed well they will try to put some indicator that this file is created on this particular date timestamps will be there so based on that we can pick the file name we can do substring we can find out which day file it is and we can use that I need to load six different text file to a single folder daily and need to load them incrementally yeah this is also very useful use case where you don't want to read everything from your source because your source is incremental they are creating one file every day and you don't want to read everything from your source so there are ways if you are dealing with a data lake in data lake you can actually specify in your data set that you want to pick file which are created between certain days or which is created after this date so if I know that my job has run successfully two days back I will try to pick only those files which are created since that date so that is how I can read my incremental data I have a scenario where I need to read an XML from a column yeah this is little bit complex in nature if he he wants you to test your uh, deep skill on this and if your SQL column is XML type, it is not straightforward that you can dump it into a, a, SQL, a different table in the destination. Probably you'll have to put intermediate step. You read your XML, you create a storage account file, and then you take that as a source. That take that as a source and then flatten it because at the start of the source, it is just a one column it's not a complete file so first try to convert that column into a file and then use that file as a source how to copy selected column from source to sync yes that's that's again one of the cool feature from ADF that if you don't want to copy everything you can define a column mapping and based on that mapping only it will pick the source columns so we have one dedicated video for that also because this is a very very useful feature so please go ahead and I encourage you to watch that now merging question are different sources so here you have data coming from different sources how you can merge them and uh, copy it to a single destination so this can be done in two or three different ways if he is looking for answer on the mapping data flow you have to say that mapping data flow actually provides option to get data from many different sources and merge it you can do all kinds of transformation and dump it that's how mapping data flow can work or you can give another option of data bricks in data bricks also you can get data from many sources and do it if you don't want to use all these things if he says that okay I don't want to use data flow then ADF also it can be achieved but there will be an extra step in between uh, you have to dump it into some staging area and then you can copy all the files together at a single table so there are work around that's how you have to do that or one more option could be um, that you dump everything if you are suppose you are dumping into a SQL table in case of SQL table you can copy over all your data from all different sources to staging <coughs> tables and then you create one store procedure which will join which will union across all the tables make a join and then dump into your actual table and then you can clear your staging area so that's also can be one of the option I think second question also revolves around that what we already talked about different tables uh, multiple different tables going to a single destination you have you have to use a staging table for this now once you have built all your uh, pipeline your you know uh, what you wanted to do now it's part of execution right so someone asked question how to run the same pipeline 100 times so yes you have all the triggers available once you trigger a pipeline it's kind of a stateless thing you can execute same pipeline 100 times also and all of them works uh, executes in isolation one run do not interfere into other so if he says that okay i have triggered it 100 times what will happen if 50 of them fails what will happen to the rest of them rest of them will continue as is so if you have parameterize your pipeline you, are, you have triggered the same pipeline with 100 different parameters 
if one fails 99 will continue to run how to define dynamic mapping in copy activity yeah this is, we talked about this in dynamic columns if you want to copy on the selected column you have to use a dynamic mapping that's where this question is coming from you have to say that okay when i'm doing a copy activity there we have an option of mapping columns that has that is done through json how to get how many rows got inserted updated dated yes this is a very uh, common use case for logging uh, whenever you are using a copy activity copy activity does give us this feature where you can actually see after the copy how many rows are inserted updated and deleted i think this uh, uh, this line requires some correction this is not about updated and deleted this is about how many records were copied over actually so if you have a copy activity at runtime you can fetch uh, you have to give your copy activity and then you have to say dot rows read and rows copied so if your 10 rows were read and five rows were copied because of some issues in rest of the five you can find out that how many were read and how many were copied how to handle nested if condition in adf yeah so adf till now do not support nested if if you have used one if condition inside that you cannot use another if what you have to do is you have to create here a child pipeline which we were talking about earlier now let's quickly jump on to the deployment part so how do you deploy your pipeline into a production so there are different ways you can deploy it most of the time and bigger companies they use devops pipelines the automated pipelines that again devops pipeline can be built in many different ways there are jetkins there are ansible there are ARM template there are many ways which we can deploy it what is powershell powershell is um uh, PowerShell is one of the offering from Microsoft which is your scripting tool in this context if you talk about you can use it for multiple different uh, operations you can actually trigger your pipeline through PowerShell you can deploy your ARM template there are many things which you can do with the PowerShell how to move pipelines from one environment to another environment that's also the DevOps pipeline you once you have done your build and development completed you have to create your pipelines okay so here it's saying without azure devops sorry my apologies here if it, if it says without devops how you can do that if you don't have a pipeline that is where the powershell will come into the picture you create your arm template from your azure data factory and the arm template can be deployed using powershell only thing to um, notice here is you should have access in your production environment you need to make sure that now coming back to our handling and optimization i don't have too many questions but we'll try to add more on coming videos uh, i'm running a ss package using ssi ir which will trigger okay so what you want to do is um, you want to um, log error message in case some something errors out right in usually people who are coming from a size background they know that they have a very good logging feature there so something similar we have here also but not for the logging but it will identify whether it has passed or failed i'll quickly show you that before we go there and what is the second question is about the parallel or execution so whenever you use a for each loop actually that gives you a flexibility that you can tell your pipeline or the activity that you want to execute uh, sequential mode or parallel mode we'll see that also let's go there so this is what i was talking about we are coming from this activity here you see green line which is for success and this is for failure so if i want to log something in case i fail here i'll use this red line and i'll say that okay my activity has failed so here if you go uh, you see plus sign and you'll see all the options what you have whether you want to if what will happen if it is skipped what will happen if it has completed success and failure most of the cases you'll use success because you want to continue your flow when something is succeeded only right and this is a for each activity i want to show here very quickly that how you can configure uh, your parallelism you see your sequential option if you check this this is where you are telling that i want sequential 
um, execution not parallel if you uncheck it will go and create a parallel execution so guys this is where we conclude this session and i would like to hear all the feedback from you guys uh, please do not uh, uh, hesitate to comment and put your questions forward we'll try to answer those also and don't forget to subscribe and share this video thanks thanks